Hello guys, welcome back. My name is Nathan and today we are going to be ranking the top 10 best NHL rookies so far this season. Now with this year, at least up to this point, we really haven't seen one prospect and one rookie absolutely dominate above the rest. It's been a pretty even playing field for the rookies so far. So who do I see as the top 10 best rookies up to this point? And if the league were to end today, who do I think should win the Calder Trophy and who do I think is the best rookie in the league so far this season? Make sure you watch till the end for all of my rankings and all the prospect content and hit that subscribe button. Once again, if you're new, 65% of the people that are watching the videos are not subscribed, so every bit helps and we make rankings and prospect content like this pretty much every single day. So every bit is appreciated. Now, when we look at the Calder Trophy race right now, as I said before, there's not really one clear-cut prospect that's dominated above the rest. Kirill Kaprizov, maybe in the first couple of games, was terrific, but he has kind of lessened, and some prospects at some points have looked better than him as well. So, I think the Calder Trophy race has definitely uh, gotten a lot more closer, and especially at that top spot, is looking very, very interesting right now. But we're going to get into the top 10 itself and start out at the 10th best rookie so far this season in the 2021 one NHL season. This is a guy that obviously as a Dallas Stars fan, I might have some bias here, but I think he has been terrific in a little bit of a shorter sample size compared to some other prospects, but I think has already been one of the Dallas Stars best forwards, that being OHLer and Flint Firebirds alumni, Ty Delandria. Now he comes at number 10 and he's only played four games, but those four games have been pretty spectacular so far. In four games, gotten one goal, one assist for two points, just got those two points in last night's game versus the Detroit Red Wings. I thought it looked amazing. There, I thought his first game was a little bit shaky. I thought that definitely was his worst game in the NHL so far. But the past three games have gotten better, better, and better. And yes, he has played versus the Detroit Red Wings. But I thought he had looked amazing and was one of the Dallas Stars' most consistent and most productive forwards over these last few games. And now going from Ty Delandria to the ninth best rookie in the NHL so far this season. This is a guy that will be surprising for the numbers he's putting up for a lot of people and even me a little bit. But I thought he always should have gotten a chance in goal for the Chicago Blackhawks and so far in four games played has been terrific. That being finished, stud goaltender Kevin Lankinen. Now, Kevin Lankinen is a guy that I've been a big fan of for a couple of years now. was a big part of that world a championship team for, for Team Finland that ended up winning gold in 2019, I believe. And I, I thought Lankinen was a guy that had potential to be an NHL player. Maybe not a starter, but a serviceable player that can really be a solid goaltender for the future for the Chicago Blackhawks. And they started out with the tandem of Delia and Subban, and especially Delia has been pretty horrendous so far. And Lincoln has been able to play four games at this moment, getting 931 save percentage. He has been especially terrific these past couple of games, but is a guy that I thought always have potential to be good. Maybe not a 931 save percentage good, but still a very solid goaltender. And I'm really, again, hoping that he continues that because he's been one of my favorite goalie prospects over these past couple of years. And seeing him finally step up and be a big part of the Chicago Blackhawks was a long time coming man was to be expected. Now it is worth mentioning that Kevin Lankinen is 25 years old, but he is still eligible for the Calder Trophy and I think it should be that way, especially for goaltenders. I mean, they don't really come into their primes until around Kevin Lankinen's age and I think he's a guy that can be an NHL player and so far has proved that pretty wonderfully. Now we're going to go on to the eighth best rookie in the NHL so far and I think especially over these past three games or so, he has been really, really good and just hasn't been able to get anything going until last night game where I thought he had played his best game and finally got the goal that he deserved. That being the first overall pick for the New York Rangers, Alexi Lafreniere. Now, again, when it comes to hype, I thought Lafreniere could have been the Calder Trophy winner. I had a number two behind Caprizov in my predictions, but I thought he was going to have a great rookie season. The first few games, I would say the first three games specifically, I thought were pretty rough with Lafreniere, but he right now sits at seven games played, one goal, one point. I think the points will start to keep going now because he finally got that first goal, but to get it in overtime in such an amazing fashion, that's vintage Alexi Lafreniere, and that's just what he does. In amazing fashion, gets the goal, and uh, I still think will be in the Calder Trophy race throughout the rest of the season. But now we're going to go on to the seventh best rookie in the NHL this year, and this guy's pretty much interchangeable between, Ale or this guy and Alexi Lafreniere are pretty much interchangeable. I think Alexi Lafreniere will leapfrog him and quite a few other guys in this list as the season goes on, but again, this is just for who has been the best rookies right now so far. Coming in at number seven, though, from the Buffalo Sabres, I have Dylan Cousins. Dylan Cousins, to give him credit, has been very solid. In seven games played, he's gotten two goals, one assist for three points, and I thought he's looked the part. I mean, he's been given 
given pretty much all the ice time that he needs to get. He's been giving all the power play time, all the offensive time. I think that's exactly where he should be put on the ice, at least to start out his career. But I think he's been really solid in that role for the Buffalo Sabres. He's been a decent scorer, two games and seven or two goals in seven games. Is nothing to scoff at. And I think he's been a pretty productive player so far, even besides the points. He's been a really effective transition and offensive player too. And that's exactly the role he should be used in at his age right now. And the Buffalo Sabres definitely need every bit they can get. So I'm hoping that Dylan Cousins continues that ice time and transitions that still throughout hopefully a lengthy NHL career. Then going on to the sixth pick, though, and the sixth best rookie so far this year, I'm going to go to another New York Ranger and go to American D-man, Keandre Miller. Keandre Miller, I think, has been really, really impressive this year. In seven games, played as one goal, one assist, two points, a 52 expected, or 52% expected goals for a percentage, and I thought it has looked great in both ends of the ice. I think it kind of started off a little bit rough in those first couple of games, first two games to be specific, versus the New York Islanders, but right after he was able to get that ice time against the Islanders, and finally get going in the next couple of games. I thought Keandre Miller was looking like one of the best Rangers defensemen. He kind of has cooled off a little bit more in the past couple of games, but I think defensively has been one of the best Rangers so far this year. And uh, it's not really saying too much when you have guys like Jack Johnson on your defense to compete with, but Keandre Miller, I think, has been really effective, really low-key, and, and it's just a really solid player in his own end specifically. I mean, there was that one uh, game versus the Pittsburgh Penguins where he just, like, he got, he got the puck from Sidney Crosby like three different times and it was like at, with absolute ease too so I think Keandre Miller has been really impressive in a lot of ways for the Rangers and especially on that defense has been super valuable as well but now we're going to go on to the fifth best rookie of this season and we're going to go on to the new jersey devils d-man in ty smith now ty smith has kind of been the opposite i think of keandre miller in terms of impact here in seven games played has one goal five assists for six points and has been pretty amazing to start out his nhl career but i i think it's a little bit different than what i was expecting because in the whl especially this past year i thought the defense was the standout the defense is what i thought he was going to really bring the new jersey devils at least to start out and then maybe we We'd see that offense uh, maybe turn a page and, and get more impressive as he got more games and with the New Jersey Devils. But it's been the exact opposite. His offense has been the standout so far. His offensive transitions and offensive game, especially on, on, on the offensive side of things, when he's in the offensive zone, has been really productive so far. And he's been a lot uh, a lot more smart than I think he was in the WHL last year. But defensively, it just hasn't been that great either. I mean, he is on the New Jersey Devils, and their defense is not fantastic. But I, I think his defense, especially when he's been paired with Tennyson has not been great and I was kind of shocked about that I'm really hoping the offense continues but especially with Ty Smith I think the defense has a lot of potential there in the NHL and I'm really hoping he's able to unlock that game as he potentially gets some different D partners we'll see then gonna go on to number four or we're then gonna go on to number four I, I can't say then anyways now on to the fourth best rookie of 2021 up to this point I'm gonna go with one of my favorite prospects coming into this season and the guy that I thought was gonna have a really low-key impact this year coming from the Ottawa Senators I have a Josh Norris. Now, all the people that were coming into this year saying Tim Stutzel was going to be their, this amazing rookie and going to be the Calder Trophy candidate from this team, and I think there was a lot of reason to think that, but personally from the start, I wanted Stutzel to play in the AHL. I thought that would be perfect for him and his development, but Josh Norris was the guy that I thought was going to transition to the NHL full-time and really make an impression. So far, that has absolutely been the case. In eight games played at this point, he has two goals, three assists for five points, a 56 expect, or percent expected goals for a percentage, which is been terrific and one of the best on the Ottawa Senators so far. I think Josh Norris has been really capable in both ends of the ice. Obviously the offense has been the main thing, but he's just a really effective player on that top six right now. He's been given the ice time, he's been given the opportunities, and so far has been making the most of it. This is a guy that coming from the NCAA, going to AHL and being the rookie of the year and being absolutely fantastic. It's not really surprising the American center doing as well as he has, but he's been great and I'm really hoping to see, see that continue for the Ottawa Senators, because especially with their C group right now they'll definitely need a great center long term and i think josh norris is totally that guy but now we're gonna go on to the top three the top three best rookies so far this season and this top three if you saw if you told me before the preseason if this was the top three i wouldn't have really been too surprised if you but when we saw just how good these guys were performing in training camps, all three of these guys made huge impressions with their team in training camps and have already been fantastic NHL players up to this point. We're going to go into this top three and we're going to go into the third spot, starting with Montreal Canadiens defenseman, 
Alexander Romanov. Now, Alexander Romanov has been mostly on the third pairing with Brad Kulak. He has had some other opportunities there, but he's mostly been on the th third pairing. He's played some penalty kill time, played some power play time as well. But Alexander Romanov, even strength, especially, I think has been really, really solid this year. The main thing that I've been impressed with, it has been his offensive impact overall. He's been used in the exact situations that I want him to be used in. He's been using his passing well. He's been using his IQ well. He's been on the power play as well as kind of like a play driver of sorts, which I think is exactly what he should be used in. We're now going to go on to number two, though. And again, kind of like the Lafreniere and uh, Cousin situation, number two and Alexander Romanov are pretty much interchangeable at this point. You could have Alexander Romanov at two, and I could see that for sure. But at number two right now, especially after the last couple of games he's had, he has continued to impress me. That being Swedish winger Nils Hoglander. Now, Hoglander has been one of my favorite prospects in the NHL for a very long time, before, way before he was even drafted. I, I remember watching Hoglander being so impressed with his fun, uh, stylistic game that always caught your eye. And he's been able to pull off so many fantastic moves, got uh, drafted in the second round by the Vancouver Canucks. Personally, I had him, I think, number 16 in my 2019 draft rankings. I was really high on him, and I wanted to see him really improve as a player going forward. And on the offensive side of things, I thought there was so much potential there. He got drafted by Vancouver. I thought it was a draft steal, and he had a, cu a, a couple years in the SHL to really gel. And he came into the training camp looking fantastic, earning his spots, and I think has looked great. Now, the consistency hasn't been awesome so far, but in the best games that Nils Hoglander has played, he's been the one of the best players out there consistently. He's had a couple of games where you can kind of be invisible, but that kind of is what you're getting in Nils Hoglander, and that's kind of how he has played in the past. But when he is on his game, when he is electric, he's one of the most fun players to see out there, and especially in that last these last couple of games versus Ottawa, it is a Senator, so take it with a grain of salt, but he has been terrific, and I think especially with that confidence, once he fully gets going with that, he'll be a player that will be on the top six for Vancouver for a very long time and will make Canucks hockey even more watchable than it already is. And trust me, Nils Highlander will score quite a few goals that even ESPN will have to broadcast them. They're so good. Then going on to the number one rookie so far this year, the best rookie in 2021 up to this point. I've talked about this player for so, so long, so many times, called him for the Calder Trophy. He had an amazing first couple of games, kind of dipped a little bit less, but in these past, I say, I'd say a week or so, has been awesome and is playing right now his best hockey for the Minnesota Wild winger Kirill Kaprizov now Kirill Kaprizov it's not a surprise that he has been the best rookie so far and I think he has been in eight games played has gotten two goals five assists for seven points and right now is leading rookies in scoring which again isn't a big surprise for me but was a surprise for a lot of different people but Kaprizov has been getting better and better that last game versus the LA Kings he played in absolutely his best game he got that second goal was amazing on defense and, and has gotten I, I would say a Kirill Kaprizov, there's been some games where he was kind of a little bit more invisible on the offensive side of things, but whenever he's a little bit more invisible, he always steps up defensively. I've noticed that too. He never takes any game off in any area. If he's taking, if he has a lesser game in one area, he's always doing better in another. And defensively, he's been one of the better wingers so far in the NHL this year too, at least from what I've seen as well. So I'm really hoping that the consistency kind of gets uh, narrowed out a little bit more, but so far to me, he's been the best offensive player in the uh, rookie-wise, at least in the league this year. And I think he has potential to be one of the better defensive ones, too. He's been fantastic and so far has been one of the MVPs from the Minnesota Wild. But that'll be it for today, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that notification bell if you've not already. Once again, thanks so much for 3K, and I appreciate all you guys watching here today and spending your time on this channel. I appreciate that a whole ton. Of course, let me know in the comments down below what you agree and disagree with with my top 10, and who do you see right now as the best rookies so far this season? Of course, make sure you share this video with your friends. If you got any hockey fans, anybody that you know in life that is not subscribed to the Grab Gang, make sure you get them on board and have them join the Grab Gang train, boys, and click on this card right here to watch all of my hockey prospects, rankings, and talk right on playlist. My name is Nathan. Thanks so much for tuning by, and I'll see you in the next video or stream. Goodbye.